I'm coming to you today from the most western point of the western isle of Cape Verde, the most western country in Africa. And why would I choose this location to bring to you my second blog about post-Brexit Britain? Well, the first one I came to you from Hawaii. And I spoke about Hawaii because it was in the middle of the Asia Pacific, one of the fastest growing regions of the world, which will give Britain a great opportunity if it taps into the Asia Pacific region for its post Brexit trade. And I'm here in Cape Verde because the second region that gives us a great opportunity is Africa. And the reason Africa gives us a great opportunity is five of the seven fastest growing economies over the last 15 years have been in sub-Saharan Africa. And one of the fastest growing regions of trade or sectors of trade is in services and education. Now currently Britain has about 50% of its trade from the European Union. Some want to replace that trade with the Commonwealth, but only 10% or so of Britain's trade comes with the Commonwealth. So we've got to look beyond just the Commonwealth to the broader African and Asian continents to look at new areas of trade. Now, if Britain can fast grasp the opportunity to do a whole series of free trade agreements with the sub-Saharan African regions and with the Asia Pacific regions with a mind to massively increasing our services and education exports into those areas of the economy, then post-Brexit Britain will have an enormous opportunity to carve for itself an identity as a trading hub, not just in goods like Singapore, but in services, financial services, education services and other services. But here is a challenge. If you are a large business, you know how to reposition yourself. But if you're a small and a medium enterprise, what does a small and medium enterprise do in negotiating with government about how they should negotiate on our behalf for post-Brexit Britain? Well, it's time now for small and medium enterprises to start lobbying. And while small and medium enterprises aren't traditionally used to lobbying into government, they must learn or well, they must get support of companies like ours in helping you lobby to ensure that Britain negotiates a post-Brexit position that helps small and medium enterprises. Because think about this, if some of the financial services markets do move to mainland Europe post-Brexit, what happens to the small and medium enterprises that have serviced that financial services industry? The restaurants, the cafes, the providers of the milk, the providers of the cutlery, the launders of the tablecloths and uh, the dry cleaners that have been cleaning suits and ties and shirts. What happens to these small businesses if there are no more suits left to press? So, you need to be empowered with a company like ours to be able to negotiate into the government of Britain, to push the government of Britain to expand its horizon, not just looking at Europe in post-Brexit, but looking at how we create a new identity to negotiate a complete series of free trade agreements in goods and services in Asia and in Africa to be able to take into account this massive growth in African economies, particularly in their middle class, that are going to need support in education and in services, a critical component of the British economy. So if you need help in lobbying or want to know how to do it, give us a call. Regards from Cape Verde, Western Edge, Sub-Saharan Africa.